On the first day of his new job, Tsukasa Mizugaki rushes to Terminal Service No. 1, which is one of the offices in Saikor, where he is taught about Jiftia androids, which can survive on synthetic souls for a maximum lifespan of 9 years and 4 months. Tsukasa is partnered with Isla, a Jiftia who is highly regarded in the office and famous for her wide knowledge of herbs and tea. The two are led out by Tsukasa's trainer Machiro Kinoshima and her partner Zack. Zack retrieves a Jiftia as a demonstration of their job for Tsukasa, and Mitsuru explains their job to him. Not long after, Tsukasa and Isla are assigned a mission to retrieve Nina, a small type Jiftia looked after by an old woman named Chizu Sharohana. After multiple tries, Isla is unable to persuade Chizu to talk to them, which makes Tsukasa doubt her abilities. She finally manages to win a chance to talk with Nina, and Chizu overhears Nina giving her consent to go with them so as not to cause trouble for Chizu, whom she loves dearly. Chizu, realizing she had not considered Nina's feelings in the matter, finally allows Nina to go with them and thanks Tsukasa when she apologizes. Tsukasa meets Yasutaka Hanada, a spotter and a 10-year veteran at Terminal Service No. 1, whose aloof behavior surprises him as well as annoys his partner Sherry. When Yasutaka asks him about how he got his job, Tsukasa reveals that his father is a friend of one of the higher-ups in the company who decided to help him after he failed his entrance exams. After another failed attempt at retrieving and scolding from Michidu, Tsukasa takes the blame despite it being Isla who caused the problem. Back at the office, he's prompted by a message about her and heads to the unit testing room where he meets Rumuru and Mikishiro Tetsugiro, who are measuring Isla's physical skills. Tsukasa asks Isla about the physical training, and she tells him of her belief that she is holding him back because of all the time she spent off the field. Because of this, Tsukasa decides to do the negotiating with Jiftia owners instead of Isla, despite the fact that it isn't what a spotter does. The next day, he begins putting together his own manual about owner negotiations and is assisted by Michidu and Zack. Once he's finished, he comes across Yasutaka, who learns about Isla's visits to the unit testing room and remarks the pointless nature of those visits, explaining that Isla's physical capabilities are on a consistent decline that cannot be fixed, a characteristic of Jiftia. Later on, Tsukasa and Isla successfully retrieve the Jiftia they were previously assigned to while Kazuka Kwanomi, an experienced spotter, and Yasutaka talk about Isla's lifespan, which is set to expire in less than 2,000 hours, giving her less than three months to live. Tsukasa is assigned to live with Isla in the company dormitory, a rule mandated for all marksmen and spotter duos in terminal service number one. However, he is unsettled by the fact that Isla repeatedly ignores him there. At terminal service number one, he confides in other employees about the problem, although their individual suggestions fail miserably at helping him attract her attention. Finally, Kazuki approaches Tsukasa about the problem and tells him she ignores other people during her personal time, not just him. She then tells him to take Isla out somewhere if he wants some. Following through with the suggestion, he successfully asks Isla to accompany him to a shopping mall. There, they go to an herb shop, and to buy some more time, Tsukasa asks Isla to help him pick out some herbs as a present to a person who he unintentionally describes as being a lot like her. Afterward, they go to a nearby amusement park where Tsukasa admits the person he was describing was Isla herself. When he says he did this to make some memories with her about their partnership, she emotionally shuts down and tells him that she was not built to play at an amusement park, which shocks him. When Isla runs off, he purchases a key ring pendant from the amusement park and gives it to her at their dorm room, telling her she can throw it away if she doesn't want it. She also apologizes apprehensively about her escape, and even though Edo had previously told Tsukasa that Isla didn't accept gifts, Isla makes the keychain an exception. Terminal Service No. 1 staff receive seven brand new retrieval missions, and Tsukasa and Isla are assigned to retrieve a Jiftia named Marsha. 
They are also warned of the presence of criminals who assume the identities of terminal service employees to retrieve Jiftia and sell them back to the other companies. Sukasa and Isla head to America's residence where they learn she is raising her owner Soto Waycane in the role of an older sister after his parents passed away. When Soda arrives home from school, he acts hostile towards Tsukasa and Isla but is surprisingly willing to sign the agreement form to take Marsha away, citing that she's just a Jiftia and adding that Gifshas cannot be trusted in telling the truth. Unable to acquire a signature as a result of Soda's attitude, Tsukasa confides in Machido about the encounter, and she advises him to solve the problem by having Soda believe he was truly loved by Marsha. As a result, Tsukasa, Isla, and Marsha decide to bake a cake for his birthday on the following day, and they are assisted by Machido and Zack. Afterwards, Mitsuru tells Tsukasa that she tried all she could to keep her father, a Jiftia, from being retrieved, which resulted in him becoming a wanderer, a Jiftia that still retains its motor skills but loses its personality and memories, causing it to become instinctual and angry. Later, Soda returns home and is surprised by the group upon spotting the birthday cake, which was molded after one used for his birthday three years ago. He remembers his family and tearfully apologizes to Marsha. On the day before the retrieval, Soda is visited by a shady man who claims to be Tsukasa and Isla's replacement from the terminal service and asks for Marsha. While returning home with some groceries, Marsha is suddenly ambushed by the bad guys from the previous episode. Later, Tsukasa and Isla are contracted by Soda, who informs them about Marsha's disappearance, and they assume it is the work of the bad guys. Retriever with only 24 hours left on Marsha's lifespan, Tsukasa resolves to retrieve Marsha and return her to Soda, and the rest of Terminal Service No. 1 joins the search. The next morning, Isla goes to the terminal service office where it is revealed that she hasn't signed into the attendance log for three years. Isla blames herself for not accompanying Kazuki when she retrieved Judy's father, which wound up costing Kazuki her ankle and resulting in her retiring from her position as Isla's spotter. In the present day, it is revealed that Marsha was in contact with Tsukasa's device, although Isla was able to block most of the blow without being contacted herself. With Isla now under maintenance for her injuries inflicted by Marsha, Tsukasa is reassigned to desk duty. After a visit from Tsukasa, Isla notes that he is still remaining optimistic despite what happened and privately questions his feelings about the situation. Once most of her maintenance is done, Isla returns to the office and realizes that she has been paying attention to Tsukasa a lot more closely lately. She confides in Michiru and Edu about it, although they misinterpret her feelings as being motivated by love, and Edu decides to help Isla stalk Tsukasa. However, after multiple attempts at observing him fail miserably, Isla confesses to Michiru about her confusion on Tsukasa's unwavering optimism. Machiru then tells her that Tsukasa never forgot about the incident with Marsha, even neglecting his desk duties to go and apologize to Soto for what happened, and assumes that he is smiling out of sadness. After finishing the last of her maintenance, Isla runs out of the dorm only to find Tsukasa isn't there. When night falls and Tsukasa has yet to return home, she goes to the office where she finds Tsukasa learning that she has 1,000 hours left in her lifespan, which translates to a month. However, when given the chance to partner up with a new Jiftia, Tsukasa declares that he wants to remain partnered with Isla, which makes her happy. One morning, Tsukasa decides to ask Isla out on a date. While trying to find opportunities to do so, he finds out that Isla has been doing chores for him at their dormitory and at the office. After asking her about it, he learns that she is trying to be useful to him, much to his chagrin. When Tsukasa musters the courage to ask her out, Isla accepts his request and decides to go to the amusement park after discussing it with Michiru and Edu. Later, reasoning to Tsukasa that she felt guilty about running out on him during their previous time there, they go there and sit at a bench, Isla's favorite spot in the park, as she was always able to observe the happiness and joy of so many people, which comforted her. 
After learning that Isla had never tried any of the park attractions, Tsukasa takes her out on a tour through the entire area, eventually ending at the Ferris wheel. As they sit inside, Isla expresses her gratitude that she's riding it with Tsukasa. As he thinks about Isla's happiness, Tsukasa falls asleep after working too hard lately, ending the date.